And now you're forced to love a man you hate Simon I know you don't feel the same But I burn for you You burn for me I burn, I burn, I burn, I burn, I burn for you Wildly talented. Welcome back to None of the Above. Those are the young, talented composers, Abigail Barlow and Emily Baer, the creators behind the unofficial Bridgerton musical album. When Netflix released the steamy series Bridgerton in December of last year, you know you watched it. I watched every episode. People became obsessed. Barlow and Baer, they were no exception. They began writing songs for a fictional Bridgerton musical, and they took their social media followers along for the entire journey. Now the two are out with an album which hit number one on the iTunes US Pop Albums Top 40 chart within an hour and a half of release. Wow, even Lady Whistledown would have good things to say, only amazing things to say. Barlow and Bear, join us now. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on this. I, I'm only laughing my way through it because we're such fans. Uh, and throughout the week, when we knew we, we'd be having you both. We've all like watched the original TikToks and the videos, and, and we're so awesome. Um, so uh, give me give me some sense. Whoever would like to go first on uh, what what was the original genesis? I always like to ask artists. Uh, maybe uh, Abigail, you first. Uh, you know the original genesis when we were both sort of fans of the show when it came out, and where did that first idea to come from to say, oh, we're not just going to be Bridgerton fans. We're going to be super fans and do something wildly creative with the show. I mean, I think we were both pretty frustrated as artists. Um, you know, I, we wanted to do this so bad and we wanted to make music for a living so bad. Uh, but, you know, musicians have really suffered during the pandemic. It's It was a really hard time. And, you know, I think both of us were really searching for some inspiration to spark something exciting that made us fall in love with the process of writing music again. And, you know, it just happened to be Bridgerton because it's a, an amazing show and full of drama and so entertaining. So, em of course, uh, Emily, give me a sense. What, what does the creation process look like for you? I, I, I'm imagining you constantly have like Bridgerton episodes on loop on a big screen, <laughs> like behind you for inspiration. I don't know. How does it all come together? I mean, we did revisit the show quite a few times um, when we were writing it, but I mean, the coolest part about the process for us was being able to share it in live, like real time with everyone that was listening to it. So like we live streamed all of our sessions and they literally got to like sit in the room with us as we were writing it. Um, and I don't know, working with Abigail, it's amazing. Like we met a few years ago and immediately like felt a, a connection musically mm. and personally we're friends, but uh, like musically, I don't know, there's just something there. Like she does something that inspires me. I do something that inspires her back. And like putting a song together is like putting together the pieces of a puzzle. And like when it comes together fully, they're like, there's really no better feeling, so. Emily, if you don't mind me asking, how, how did you both meet? I mean, I know artists, were you kind of living in the same city, friends of friends? I'm just kind of curious how this sort of came together. We met through a mutual friend um, who was like, oh, you two should meet, you, you do great stuff together. And we met and hit it off and actually first started hanging out as friends. Like we had a few like bachelorette nights where we just hung out and watched the bachelorette. And then we wrote together for the first time. And both of us individually at the time, like left that session being like, oh, like, oh, that there's something here. And then over the past couple of years, we started like really writing together. And especially during the pandemic last year, um, even before Bridgerton, like last summer, we started like writing together every day um, and really felt like there was a serious partnership there, so. That's amazing. Well, congratulations again on the success. Uh, Abigail, a f this may be an impossible question for you to answer. I don't know. Do you have a favorite song that you've worked on again that may be like, you're like, they're all my favorite, but I'm just curious what stands out to you? Honestly, I think the whole album just, uh, I'm, we're so proud of the project as a whole. I don't think that each piece is really uh, correct on its own unless it's heard in its entirety. Like I, I, I love it all and I've never been proud of my work, but Bridgerton gets a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Abigail, let me stay with you. This is so incredible. Kennedy Center Honors. You recently had a performance there televised October 1st, if I'm not mistaken, on PBS. 
Abigail, to stay with you, what was that process like and what can fans expect? Holy cow. I mean, it was it was crazy when we were asked to do it, and um, we're really excited. We got to perform with uh, our amazing friend, and we are so excited for people to see it. Uh, Emily, did, is that some, sort of something? I mean, I guess if you're a songwriter or performer, you always think like you've got those, you know, the great white way. You've got everything out there, and you sort of dream of doing. Was Kennedy Center Honors ever something that necessarily you thought you'd be able to bring your talents to? It's incredibly well deserved. I'm just curious. Like, did you ever see that? trajectory for yourself and did you think it would be this project i mean i think it's on a list of every musician's dream venues because it's such an iconic venue full of so much history um and i did not think it would be happening this soon but when we got the email i was like is this real is this happening and to be included in such like an incredible lineup for such a legendary milestone is like truly surreal so we're so excited for everyone to see the show. It's like just hit after hit after hit after star after legend. And like just to be even included is just, again, we're still sitting here in shock. So, <laughs> uh, well, it's not shocking to any of us from the outside looking in. To us, it's like we see the art that you all have, have created, this labor of love that you've birthed and put out there into the world. And so for us, it's like, yeah, of course, Kennedy Center Arms is a natural extension of, of the amazing work that you've done. Uh, Emily, to stay with you here, uh, finding a creative home on TikTok. I love talking with TikTok creators because what a moment that TikTok has had, especially in the pandemic. Uh, what was that kind of decision process look like for the two of you to say that was the venue by which you wanted to gain much more of a following? What does your TikTok creation process look like? I mean, Abigail's been on TikTok since like the beginning of time. And I've sort of seen how she's used it over the past couple of years um, and see it kind of grow into like this incredible app full of such creativity um, that is truly like unlike any other social media app there is. And also the fact that like, even if you have five followers, you can reach 10 million people. And so it was kind of a no brainer to have this journey live mostly on TikTok because I mean, that was part of the magic is like seeing all of these people duet and share their voices and share their talents and like people choreographed entire dance numbers and like did mm. stage design and playbills and like that was the coolest part is like somehow accidentally stumbling and building this incredible community full of so many talented individuals who love this as much as we do. Uh, and then Abigail, finally to you, uh, since Emily said that you've been on TikTok since the beginning of time, I'd love to know about your process here as a content creator there on TikTok. And I think specifically of a famous TikTok affirmation, which I know you both know, I don't chase, I attract. What belongs to me will find me simple. That's all over TikTok. I was curious if that, that sort of positive TikTok energy of creators is something that you sort of embodied here. Because I find a lot of people that blow up on TikTok, they're like, listen, folks, that affirmation is real. Like I believe in it and I've embodied it. But what, what has the journey looked like for you? My gosh. I mean, my entire journey has been on the internet. You know, I've sort of been just trying to make this dream happen on my own. And, you know, when I decided to lean on friends and family and people that I love to make music with, uh, we made magic and we made something so exciting. And, you know, that's all we've ever wanted to do with our life is make music for the rest of it and leave our mark on the world in a positive way. And we're so grateful that we got to do that in the middle of a pandemic, when everyone was sad, we just got to make joy. And that is all we've ever wanted to do. So it, it has been a blessing and the biggest, biggest honor of my life to be a part of. Well, I am grateful that both of you are able and willing to take the time for the show tonight. If I had a live, yes, yeah, snaps around. If I had a live studio audience right now, which sometimes I wish I did for the show, they'd all be on their feet in riotous applause for both of you for your success. Congratulations on the Kennedy Center honors. We will certainly be watching October 1st. Barlow and Bear, thank you. Congratulations. Appreciate you being on the show and best of luck. That is awesome. I love that energy there. Okay, be sure and check out the unofficial Bridgerton musical album. You will absolutely love it. That was a great interview. Thank you both.